I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about using rigid foam board on basement remodels and on your build outs. Best practice for basement wall insulation, meaning the best insulator as well as best vapor barrier system is closed cell spray foam. Now the second best is rigid foam board, especially if you're gonna to try to save yourself some money and do it yourself. Also called extruded polystyrene XPS or poly iso insulation, rigid foam boards create an excellent vapor barrier along with an insulation layer that will not promote mold growth. The simplest way to prevent this water vapor that we have problems with in basements from entering the space is to prevent air movement or moisture in the air into that basement by installing a solid vapor barrier. When properly installed, closed cell spray foam, spray or rigid foam board, acts as that vapor barrier as well as insulates. Now poly plastics and craft faced fiberglass insulation, it's not a good vapor barrier in basements. The main goal for using rigid foam board against masonry walls is to prevent vapor movement and mold growth. Now while it can still be used as an insulation or standalone insulation, it is often supplemented by a two x four wall and fiberglass insulation. So what's the best rigid foam board to use? Well, there are two types pretty much of rigid board. There's the extruded polystyrene, the XPS, the blue stuff, the Dow, and then there's the poly iso insulation board. Both types work well and are both of them are closed cell boards. Poly iso is the better choice and Poly ISO is foil faced and it's most commonly used because of its fire retardant properties. Under normal fire conditions, XPS will melt and drip while poly ISO chars over. The poly ISO foil facing also helps with limiting um, of that moisture travel as well. It's part of that vapor barrier. Uh, poly ISO is commonly, we see it in roofs, wall ceiling and specialty applications, both in commercial and residential buildings of all types. Uh, it delivers a long-term stable thermal performance somewhere like R5 per inch for value. Now here's some things I want you to consider. Compared to spray foam, it is harder to install rigid boards, especially in areas where there are pipes and other utilities. For example, a tight space where maybe a rim joist is up close to a, a, a parallel joist or maybe areas where there are lots of wiring or pipe penetrations or pipes running along the walls but it is a cheaper and a popular choice if you're gonna be doing it as a DIY project. If you can, consider relocating any of those wall obstructions we just talked about so that you can allow the continuous run of the rigid board. And again, if you can relocate pipes to the joist bays or wires and things like that, get them off the masonry and that would be great. If you can't relocate obstructions, then you just gotta run and start and stop your rigid foam on either side of that obstruction and go back later and fill in that area with closed cell spray foam. I recommend that you use a two inch insulation board on the walls and install them in vertical orientation, tight to the floor and all the way up if you can, or up to the uh, top of the wall or the rim joist or the joists, depending on your layout. Rigid board insulation typically comes with interlocking tongue and groove edges. Um, I always try to use those edges, fit them together, use those factory edges, and then uh, once they're tight, I return later and we tape and seal the seams. Prior to installing the next insulation board, I always add a thick bead of adhesive into that edge of the groove. I use the DAP Dining Grip Construction Adhesive. Uh, it works well with this rigid board stuff. It'll also bond to masonry walls. Dining Grip is a premium high strength adhesive. It's a multi-material adhesive. It delivers powerful instant grab and you want that because you're doing those vertical insulation boards against masonry. It also creates a really long lasting adhesion, adhesion, so that's why we use it. And we press that insulation board right up against the masonry. Make sure the masonry wall is smooth. Lastly, we tape all of our vertical seams using foil tape. And then we seal the tops, the sides, and the bottom edges um, with a pro, pro spray gun applicator. And we use the DAP polyurethane uh, low temp foam sealant, so uh, spray foam. And we use that to completely fill all the gaps, penetrations, air leaks, anything not covered by the rigid foam. Um, now let's talk about the rim joist and the sill plate area because uh, it might make sense to fill that area first or afterwards, it depends on the orientation of your ceiling joist and also your workflow and efficiency. The rim joist is located above grade and for many years we treated that similar to wall insulation like we did above, like a, a two by four wall. 
and we would just stuff insulation bats in the rim joist. This method is no longer considered best practice. Best practice for rim joists in the sill plate area is to seal all the cracks against air leakage and then to insulate the area and to create that vapor barrier. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description below about a, on a video that we did on how to seal rim joists. We talked about three methods. Um, once the rigid foam is installed, it's then time to install a basement wall if you want, right up against the two inch rigid boards. You can then uh, add fiberglass insulation to the stud walls and that's gonna increase your basement R value. So guys, don't forget, uh, we did some other videos on best practices in the basement for insulating, rim joist walls, spray foam, closed spray foam. We talked about uh, using a froth pack. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up and check out our other videos. We'd appreciate it. And also leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys. I'm Rob Robillard and we'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter.